Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and blessings of the Almighty be upon one and all. My brothers, my sisters, we start off by declaring the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursaleen. Nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa tabi'ina wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsanin ila yawmiddini wa ba'd. We always praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon all conditions. We send blessings and salutations upon the greatest of creation, the most noble of all prophets, Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah bless him, his household, his companions, and may Allah bless every one of us and grant us the best month of Ramadan. As you notice, the month of Ramadan comes with so much of blessing. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed this month from the 12 months of this beautiful calendar uh, known as the Hijri calendar that the Muslims use, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has definitely made Ramadan the best of the months. As soon as the moon is sighted, we're all excited. As soon as the moon is sighted, we can actually taste the beauty of this blessed month. May Allah grant us the softening of our hearts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept the supplications and the du'as that we are making. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from among those who truly achieves the forgiveness that this month is meant to bring towards us and paradise Jannatul Firdaus. This year, alhamdulillah, we have a brand new episode and it is known as supplications from revelation. Supplications referring to du'a referring to calling out to the Almighty for our needs and we want to know from revelation what the Almighty has actually uh, written for us in the Quran. Uh, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has described various supplications and then we also want to look at some of the words of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him when he supplicated the Almighty. When he called out to the Almighty, the reason why we want to look at the Quranic supplication is because you and I know that our words are not as valuable as the words of others uh, who were chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, such as the prophets, and definitely nowhere near the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if Allah Almighty has chosen words to be placed in the Quran, and those were words of supplication, either something where he is asking us to call out to him using specific words, or where he is ask, uh, showing us the words used by others. Uh, he is describing what others have said. Uh, either way, they are the most blessed words in comparison to us. And this is why it's absolutely important for us to realize that whenever we call out to the Almighty, He hears, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ You know, the verses of Surah Al-Baqarah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about Ramadan, immediately after that, He speaks about calling out to Allah. And He says, whenever my worshippers call out to me, when they ask me something, I am very, very near I respond to those who have supplicated, to those who have called out to me whenever they call out to me. So, The Almighty is speaking about how we can achieve guidance by believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by responding to the call of Allah. So, there are two things. One is you and I, when we call out, and two is when Allah has asked us to do something. So it's not like Allah is calling out to us in terms of supplication, a'udhu billah, but He is calling out in terms of instruction, asking us to actually be from among those who call out to, uh, who call out to Him and who listen to Him when uh, He has asked us to do something. This is why we always say, when someone is asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something, it's not fair that that person asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when Allah has asked them to do things and they're not interested. So if you look very carefully at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, He's saying, you need me indeed. I don't need you. But I'm going to ask you to do a few things. When you ask me to do things, I'm going to do them for you, but I want you to do what I have asked you to do. 
It's quite simple. You know, when we have children, you have someone, when they listen to you uh, and they were to ask you for something small thereafter, you would actually give it to them. But if they don't listen to you at all, and then they were to ask you for the smallest thing, well, sometimes we may do it out of our goodness, but uh, on a lot of occasions, we probably would turn away and we wouldn't even give them. So this is why the Prophet ﷺ has reminded us about the importance of listening to what Allah has to say, to being on the same page. We have people who uh, come saying, uh, I'm calling out to Allah for such a long time, but uh, I'm not being responded to. That's a feeling that some who are weak would get in their hearts. It's a sign of the weakness of Iman. The Almighty definitely listens. He answers. He gives. He even gives when we don't deserve it. That's the Almighty. That's how He operates. Subhanallah. He is Ar-Rahman. He is Ar-Rahim. He is the most merciful, the most beneficent. But we definitely do need to ask ourselves if we are doing what the Almighty has asked us to do. Do we dress appropriately? Do we fulfill our obligations? Do we try our best to abstain from prohibition? Do we seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do we really uh, uh, ask for Allah's mercy? And it brings me straight to point number one. My brothers, my sisters, whenever you want to call out to Allah Almighty, ask yourselves, what is your relationship with Allah Almighty? What is your relationship? Why are you calling out to Allah? Who is Allah to you? Who is your maker, your creator to you? Do you really believe? And that will lead you to checking yourself. Are you definitely from among those who try their best to become closer to the Almighty, who try their best to be uh, on par with what the Almighty wants? If that is the case, then when you call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will listen to you, subhanallah. And he will give you what you want, as you want it, how you want it, when you want it. That's the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught us that when a person calls out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah hears it definitely. There's no doubt he's heard it. He responds to it and he gives you what he knows is best for you. So what is best for you? You don't know. I don't know. Sometimes I'm asking Allah for something and he knows that's not good for me. I want a certain job, for example, and he, he doesn't give me that particular job, but he's heard me and he's responded in a better way. I will be patient for two years and then he will give me a much better job that will open doors beyond my imagination. That is Allah. But when you don't have that conviction, you become depressed during the waiting period. So the Almighty sometimes gives you what you want, as you want it, how you want it, when you want it. MashaAllah, may Allah grant that to us. But when we, when we don't know it's bad for us and He knows it's bad for us, we need to say, may Allah keep it away from us. May Allah keep it away from us. So that is why when something delays, it's another way of Allah responding. Sometimes He gives you what you want, but when the time is right, it's not yet right. Sometimes He does not give you exactly what you want, but in place of that, he gives you something, either in the hereafter, either in the dunya, or either in your future, something that would be beneficial for you. So you're never going to lose by calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ud'uni astajib lakum. Wa qala rabbukum ud'uni astajib lakum. Your Lord is saying, call out to me. I will answer you. I will definitely answer you. How I answer you. That is my job, subhanAllah. That is up to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my brothers and sisters, never lose hope in the mercy of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you do good deeds, you actually uh, are becoming closer to Allah. And this is why many times when we've just finished our salah or you know, at the end in the qa'da of the salah, or sometimes we've just given a charity, we've just done some good deed, call out to Allah, ask Allah. That's a very blessed moment of calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Perhaps one of these episodes, I will go into the timings of dua and uh, to try and look into which time would be better for a person to call out to Allah. But I must say there is no fixed time. Any time call out unto Allah. I give you one example of seeking the forgiveness of Allah, which is also a blessed dua. It's a beautiful supplication. Don't wait for a season before you call out to Allah. People say, I've been very sinful. I'll wait for the time I go for Hajj. When I go for Hajj, I will definitely be able to call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek forgiveness. You don't know if you're going to make it to Hajj. 
You don't know if you're going to make it to the Friday you're waiting for. You don't know if you're going to make it to the Ramadan that you're waiting for. So why are those blessed moments and occasions and places there? In order for you to repeat and reiterate that forgiveness that you sought from Allah, but not in order to hold on and wait for that time. That means anytime you want to call out to Allah, call out to Allah. It might just be a moment of acceptance. I have a habit while I'm speaking, I say, may Allah forgive us, may Allah open our doors, may Allah grant us cure. Keep on calling out to Allah. You never know. The angels might say, Ameen to that dua as per the hadith of the Prophet wasallam. It's just amazing. It's something very powerful. So if you are to call out to Allah, don't wait for any moment. Call out to Allah now, here and now, with your du'as. Repeat them, repeat them as many times as you want. You call out to Allah, you repeat the du'a. And when the blessed moments and times come and the seasons come, if Allah has given you the opportunity to witness that moment, that time, that place, you repeat the same du'a again. You repeat the seeking of that forgiveness again. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will indeed grant you what you want. And if not, Paradise awaits you because those who have sought something from Allah and they may not have seen it here in the dunya, in this world, the Almighty replaces it with something better in the hereafter. Understand this. So your dua is never wasted. I am, I am one of those who constantly calls out to Allah with all my needs, with whatever I want, whether it's for myself, for others, for those suffering across the globe. Don't be selfish in your dua. Call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you will see the great, great blessings of that particular calling. Now, if we look at the Quran and the Sunnah, meaning revelation in terms of the Qur'an and when it comes to the Sunnah, we're talking of the words. Here, we're referring to the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. We will find these beautiful wordings. Why do we look at the Qur'an? Allah speaks about uh, the, the messengers, for example, and He says, Those are the ones whom Allah has guided. So, Follow that particular guidance. We need to follow the messengers. So when the stories of the messengers have come to us and we see that they who were chosen by Allah called out to Allah, whether it was for forgiveness, whether it was for some savior, uh, you know, to be saved from something, whether it was for something they wanted, all of those that have been recorded, they are recorded for a reason. For you and I to go through them, to look at them, to learn from them, to understand the greatness of the Almighty, the helplessness of man, the dependency of man upon the Almighty, and to be able to use the same words if possible when it comes to our own needs. Why the same words? Well, the reason why the same words should be used or preferred to be used, the same words as have been used by the previous messengers. Those supplications have already reached Allah and that wording worked. It worked. So if you were to use the same wording, you would also be calling on that mercy of Allah that has already come down in the past with exact wordings. It's like a passcode. If I told you, if you want to open this bag, the code is 733, for example. If you were to say, okay, let me just try all these other numbers, and you tried, you tried, you tried, etc., etc. I know 733 worked, it's a combination, let me use that number, and it will open the bag. So I use these wordings, but we definitely would not have the exact level of sincerity as the prophets. However, we should be working on our sincerity, we should be working on that closeness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we definitely will be able to benefit from that. So this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us and encouraging us to look into revelation and to be able to look at these words that were used in order to call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, in order to uh, call out with the same words. Another very interesting point, Allah speaks about the Qur'an. And Allah says, You know, this Qur'an, this Qur'an definitely guides towards that which is the best. Aqwam, you know, the most upright, the most uh, in terms of value, the best, the straightest. Uh, this is what the Qur'an leads you to. So even in terms of supplication, the Qur'anic supplication is of a value of its own. It is definitely very, very high. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who understand. 
uh, this particular beauty of the Quran. I want to go into the beginning of the Quran. Right at the beginning, we have a surah known as Al Fatiha. That surah Al Fatiha is the most important surah in the entire Quran. It's called Ummul Quran, the mother of the Quran. It's called As Sab' Al Mathani, the seven verses that are constantly repeated. And it has many other names. It is the dua. It is also called As Salah. Sometimes the term Salah is used not to refer to prayer or supplication, but it is used to refer to the surah, Surah Al Fatiha. So it's important for us to know why. The reason is it is an instruction of the Almighty to repeat this surah in every unit of prayer, not just in every prayer, in every unit of prayer. You know, we call it the raka'at, the units. So Fajr has so many units, Dhuhr has so many units, etc., etc. Even if they're voluntary units that you are uh, fulfilling for the sake of the Almighty, you need to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has required you to read a surah, a specific chapter. Everyone needs to know it off by heart, whether you understand it or not. And that is Surah Al-Fatiha, the opening surah. It starts off with Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you take a look at this surah, it is actually amazing because it has in it just a supplication. But it's divided into two. And the Almighty explains that to us through the blessed lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a hadith in Sahih Muslim. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that Allah Almighty says, that's called hadith Qudsi. So a hadith Qudsi is that hadith where uh, the Almighty is speaking to us, but Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us what he has said, and it's not a verse of the Quran, but it's an explanation of the Prophet, peace be upon him, of what Allah has said. So he says, قسمت الصلاة بيني وبين عبدي نصفين. I have divided Surah Al-Fatiha between myself and my worshipper into two. Wow. Surah Al-Fatiha divided into two. My brothers, my sisters, when you are reading Surah Al-Fatiha, it's totally between you and Allah. Divided exactly half. So how? Many people might not understand it. So the hadith explains it. When my worshipper says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, when my worshipper says, all praise is due to Allah, Lord of the worlds, I say, that means Allah says, my worshipper has praised me. Imagine Allah is so happy. You just praised Allah and now uh, Allah is saying, wow, my worshipper has praised me. Allah is saying, my worshipper has praised me. Whenever you say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, or others are saying it, or a billion people are saying it at the same time, Allah responds to all of them at the same time. When they say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, He says, and the angels are witness to this, My worshipper has praised me. Verse number one, you get a response. Verse number two, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Now, who is my Lord? Who is the Lord of the worlds? He is the most beneficent, the most merciful. Ar-Rahman is a special mercy. Ar-Rahman is a, a, a common mercy, right? That Allah has upon all His creatures. And Ar-Rahim is a special mercy that Allah has for those who believe. So the hadith is telling us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept this mercy. And He is the most merciful. The verse of the Quran is so beautiful, it has in it Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim as the, the next verse, the second verse, subhanAllah. As you open the Quran, people say, oh, this book has in it uh, so much of, you know, nowadays with this Islamophobia, people think the Quran is a book that makes people drift away from kindness. And yet the very second verse, Allah is saying, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. He is the most merciful. He is the most beneficent. And he responds to anyone who says that or who reads that verse that subhanallah, my worshipper, uh, the first one, he, my worshipper has praised me, Hamidani Abdi. My worshipper has declared my majesty, Majadani Abdi. He has declared my greatness. Amazing how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is responding to those who are saying Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim by saying, my worshipper, my worshipper has actually declared my greatness. Subhanallah, subhanallah. My brothers and sisters, when we read Surah Al-Fatiha, let's take it seriously. We move to the third verse. 
We're talking of supplication, but this is the build up to supplication. When you want to call out to Allah, first seek forgiveness. Make sure that you have sought forgiveness from all that which you've done that was evil, that which you know, that which you, which you don't know. Declare the greatness of Allah. Declare the fact that you are helpless. You are totally and solely dependent upon Allah. And ensure that you are humble. You, when you ask Allah, you, you are humble, softened. You know, don't just ask Allah like, uh, if you want, do it for me. And if you don't want, don't do it for me. That's the reason why when we call out to Allah, we're not allowed to say, Inshallah. We have to call out with conviction. You don't say, uh, uh, Oh Allah, forgive me, Inshallah. No. Oh Allah, forgive me. And you stop there. Because you don't want it to, to connect it to whether Allah wants to do it or not. You desperately want it. You desperately want it. Ultimately, Allah does what He wants. So uh, the hadith of the Prophet, peace be upon him, in Sahih al-Bukhari, he says, when you call out to Allah, don't say inshallah after that. If you were to say inshallah, it's a mistake because it's like someone saying, ah, if you want to give me, give me. If you don't want, I don't really need it. Astaghfirullah. I'm sure those of us who have said inshallah when we say a dua, we don't do it intentionally. Some of us don't even know what it means. Or we haven't thought about what it means. So my brothers and sisters, uh, when we're calling out to Allah, we need to declare the praise of Allah. We seek the forgiveness of Allah. We show our dependence upon Allah. We need to send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because all the goodness that we have came to us through him and Allah chose him. The best of creation, most noble of prophets. So what Allah considered and what Allah decided would be the highest and the greatest, we are also confirming indeed we are not jealous, we are not uh, far off, we are not, you know, we are acknowledging, we are appreciative and indeed he is the highest and the most noble of all prophets, etc, etc. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Once that has happened, we call out to Allah. Here, Maliki Yawmiddin, a person is saying, the third verse, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Allah responded, my worshipper has praised me. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, my worshipper has declared my greatness or majesty. Maliki Yawmiddin, owner of the day of judgment, owner of the day of judgment. So that uh, statement is also a great declaration of the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're confirming it. Uh, in fact, when, when, uh, when we say Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Athna alayya abdi. It's actually a little error of mine, but it's fine. Athna alayya abdi. Uh, my worshipper has praised me in a different way. The first was praise. The second was also a form of praise. The third is declaring the majesty of Allah. The third is majjadani abdi, where we say owner of the day of judgment. Now you're declaring the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you take a look at this verse, it is so powerful. It is actually something amazing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us because immediately after that we say, You alone we worship, you alone we seek the help of. You alone we worship, you alone we seek the help of. So the three verses were connected to Allah. Then we have the one verse in the middle, that verse in the middle, half of it is for Allah and half of it is for you. Because when you say, you alone we worship, you're declaring that that is your connection with Allah. And you alone we ask for help, it's something you need. So you are actually uh, uh, asking Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds in a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful way. Inshallah, tomorrow we will be going through the next session. Uh, I know today was a very, very interesting session. I would have loved to complete the entire surah, but I don't want to rush it. We have an entire month ahead of us. We will be speaking of supplications and I want to show you how powerful Surah Al-Fatiha is. So, inshallah, don't forget to tune in again tomorrow to look for the next session. And by the will of Allah, we will meet again, inshallah. Until then, aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad wa sallamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.